There is the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one of the meet. First of all, a very happy uh, new Coptic year. Today, this Sunday, the last Sunday of the Coptic year. And this coming Thursday will be the beginning of the new Coptic year. And when is the night, we'll love to see all of you. We're going to have Ashia here to celebrate the new year together. Uh, it will be the Ashia starts at 7 o'clock. And we'll normally have a beautiful procession with all the martyrs, big uh, icons around the church. But I advise you to, if you can come, when is the night from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock or 8 a.m. Today's gospel uh, from Matthew chapter 24. It's basically the same gospel that we just heard last week, also from Mark chapter 13. And the story of the gospel, actually, our Lord God Savage Christ was teaching in the temple. And when he came out to the temple, the disciples started bragging about the beautiful altar that they had. But the Lord precisely said, by the way, this altar will not stay. It's going to be destroyed. Then four of the disciples actually started saying, you know what? It seemed like he knows everything. He knows the future. But they told Jesus privately, John, James, Peter, and Andrew. And he asked him a very important concern. I'm sure all of us here in this church right now, and everyone, what will be the end of life? What will be the end of life? We'd love to know. And our Lord God Savage Christ, when you go home, I advise you to read Matthew, uh, Mark 13 or Matthew 24. Start the list what will happen. In the beginning, he said, What will happen to the world? What will happen to the believer? The gospel will be preached all around the whole world. He talks about also how false prophets will come in his name and false Christ will come in his name. And at the end, actually, of the gospel, he talks about the, the important moment which St. Peter called it the day of the Lord, when the Son of Man will come and he will send his elected angel to the fourth corner of the whole world and they, let, they, elected, they selected the elected one and it would see Christ coming in his glory as we always pray, he shall come back in his glory to judge the living and the dead. When you hear all of this, in my fact, there are so many books and many dilemma. I'm sure you remember, if you remember the year 2000, with so many actually prophecies or ideas about, you know, this year will be the end of the year. But Saint actually Peter list for us what should we do and should we behave when we hear all of this. When we go to actually today, in today's epistles of Peter, Second Peter chapter 3, he speak to us actually what should we do. Number one, actually, he gave us a message in verse 8. He said, you know what? For the day of the Lord, but beloved, do not forget this thing, this one thing, that which you, the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The first foundation, St. Peter said, well, by the way, I want to not worry about the date. Because one day in the eyes of the Lord, it can be equal to one thousand. And one thousand equal to one day. But don't worry about the date. Don't worry to, to trouble yourself. And for example, I'm a 9-11 survivor. Honestly, that day, I did really felt it's at the end of life. When you see everything is darkened, when you see actually the building is shaking, people running around, people dead around you, you feel that's it, this is the end of the day. But at the end of the day, and that day actually 3,000 people went to work and they did not come back home. And that day, this was the end of the day for th this 3,000 people. But St. Peter actually put in a very important foundation. He said, by the way, don't worry about the day of the Lord. Because one thing you want to remind us, because actually, God's timing is different than my timing. You now we're trying to calculate everything in our life with my timing is God's. God's timing is different than my timing. And that's actually, you and I, we can struggle in our spiritual life with that. Because sometimes I pray about something. I keep praying and praying and praying. And I say to myself, God is not listening. God is not listening. The answer is God's timing is different than my timing. And that's why in verse actually 9, he said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. It's not really and not answering. As some count slackness, but he is long suffering toward us, which means actually God's timing is different from my timing. God will listen, but he does not but does not actually don't think God does not listen to you. The problem is our God is one problem only. He's very patient. Long suffering. But number one foundation, Saint Peter telling us, you know what? Don't worry about the day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord actually will come. Number two, second concept, which is in verse 10. 
He said, you know, the day the Lord will come like a thief. You know, can you imagine a thief coming to steal something in your house? He's not going to text you and tell you, by the way, I'm coming this tonight to steal your house. Or he's going to call you and say, by the way, I'm in my way right now. Make sure that I'm coming to steal your house. The, the thief will come without even you know knowing. But the second point of St. Peter tells us, by the way, don't worry about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. And he's saying here, but that day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But don't worry about that. The third concern actually, but he said, you know, it, it comes like a thief. But the most important thing, watch and pray, for you do not know neither the day or the hour when the Son will come, when the Son of Man will come. Which means the end of the day could be my end, last day here in this life. It could be any minute. But don't worry about the day of the Lord, don't worry about the time, and know that the day of the Lord will come like a thief. A second concern, actually, St. Peter is telling us, which you will find in verse 13. Verse 13, he says, you know what? Nevertheless, we according to his promise, we live on God's promise. Look for new heavens and new earth in which the righteousness dwells. Which means, keep yourself busy and think about one thing only. Think about heaven and the new life. And that's actually us, I mean, in the end of the creed, we always say, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the common age to come. And we can recite the creed, but when it comes to the last part of the creed, we sing it. Because one thing we should read, all of us, longing and, uh, for it is basically heaven. And then he said, don't worry about that day. Don't worry about the time. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. But the most important thing, actually, I want you to do that in your life here on earth. Every day, think about heaven. I love Abuna Tadras always when you listen to his sermons, he always speak about one thing. Heaven, 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 heaven. And he said, if you really think about heaven and think about the new life, your mind and your heart will be occupied with heaven. But therefore, your heart and your life will be heaven by itself. And he gave us one advice which I want to focus on today, which you will find it in verse 14. Uh, verse 14, he said, hey, be diligent and to be found. Verse 14, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent and to be found in him, in peace without spot or blindness, which is the topic I want to speak actually about today. The Lord said, the one thing, St. Peter gave him advice, for that day, don't worry about the time, the day will come like a thief, but also in the meantime, not only the day will come, think about heaven, but the Lord, wanna, that day when he comes, where he's praying to us, he says, be with, uh, I want to uh, be spotless with, uh, and blameless. Which means actually living what? When somebody is spotless or blameless, that person must be living life of holiness. And that's what I want to talk to you about, life of holiness. What's holiness? Yeah, and he said, I want you to live a life of holiness. What's life of holiness? Sometimes all of us, by the way, we are very confused between being perfect and life of holiness. Being perfect, none of us will be perfect. The only one is perfect is our Lord God, Savage Christ. And the only one who call him absolute holiness is one person, our God. But holiness does not mean you are sinless. But holiness means struggling every day to get to God. If you, true, if you live a truly life of repentance every day, and every night before you sleep, you tell him, Lord, the absolute of the about all the sin that I, I sin today, and you practice every day to come back to God, you're living a life of holiness. One of the fathers said, life of holiness is separation to God. When you, treat, when you live a life of holiness, that means you separate your life from God. That's life of holiness. But life of holiness does not mean that you are sinless. Life of holiness does not mean you are perfect. Life of holiness does not mean that you're struggling. But actually, life of holiness, it's a, a struggle every day. I struggle every day. And I change every day from the image of God to becoming the likeness of God. That's life of holiness. Life of holiness does not mean, because all of us are shy. When we hear the word, I want uh, life of holiness, oh, that's impossible to achieve. That's impossible to do. I remember Amba Asanasi from Ben Mazar always when he comes, when he said, Amar Hadulli, Ya Qaddisa. For somebody who are building a house and they told you, I'm not Qaddisa. Allah, Allah, it's not my choice. I'm not telling you that it's a choice. But Allah, it's actually God's calling. God called each one of us to be holy. He said, eh, be holy as your what? As your heavenly father who is what? Is holy. For holiness is not a choice anymore. It's not you and I who choose to be holy. But actually,
actually holiness is a calling from God. Each one of us called to be holy, called to strive every day, to strive every day, to fight temptation every day, to live a life of holiness. But holiness does not mean perfect, but actually struggling every day to live a life of holiness. Holiness is when you allow the grace of God, God's grace, work in you. When you listen to God's grace in, heart, in your heart, and you come back to God, that's holiness. Holiness is a calling, not a choice. There is actually a beautiful description in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Saint Paul actually gave a beautiful description about what's holiness. When you go to Ephesians chapter 4, 24, you say they, and that you put on the new man. When did you put on the new man? All of us here in the church, we put on the new man. When did you put on the new man? During baptism, because in baptism, two important things happen to us. Number one, baptism, the goal of the baptism, to wash away the old sin that we inherit from Adam and Eve. And the most important thing, to change our nature. That's why St. Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, verse 21, it's simply said, if anyone who ever, who ever been baptized into Christ, put on Christ. For you and I actually did the baptism, we receive a new man. The old sin that we inherit from Adam and Eve is washed away in baptism. And we inherit a new person. But during my life here on earth, I struggle every day to keep this new person. That's one of the fathers said one time in city. Baptism is one time performance, but it's a lifetime commitment. Because in baptism, we walk after the baptism, we take it after the, what, the fountain of the baptism, you become holy. You wear the white garment. But throughout your life, actually, you struggle and to keep this white garment clean through one thing, through repentance. But he said, you know what? Put on the new, the new man. Uh, put on the new man which was created according to God. Yeah, and all of us, when God created us, he said, you know, let's make, it, let's make a man in the likes of our image. In the image of God, he created many, male and female. For all of us here, we created in God's image. In God is holy, therefore we are called to be holy like him. In what? In righteousness and in holiness. But therefore you and I are called to live a life of holiness. But the tough question actually, us. We know that holiness is not being perfect. Holiness is struggling. Holiness is how to renew my own person baptism every day. Holiness is struggle. But how can I live a life of holiness? I give you, there's actually a lot of advice, but I'm going to give you two beautiful advice. Number one, you will find it in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And this is a very important verse. I wish all the young men to memorize this verse here. A very important verse. He said in verse 2, he said, 12.2 actually, Romans 12.2, he said, and do not con be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may be proved what is good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect, the perfect will of God. He said, number one, the very important aspect you and I are going to struggle a lot in our society, especially in our society right now. We're going to struggle with our friends. We're going to struggle in our life. But say to put that one thing, you want to live a true life of holiness, do not be confirmed to this world of fear. You will find so much temptation outside. But the key actually transforms. Do not be like others, because you are created in God's image. And also in baptism, you receive the new man after the wash of all sin. You are a new person in Christ. That's why St. Paul said in Galatians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 27, he said, If anyone in Christ is a new person, I'm a new person every day. Through that, I will live the life of holiness. I'm struggling every day, but I will live the life of holiness. But he said, do not be confirmed to this world here. But the key is transform. Transformation happens through one thing only. The renewal of what? Of my mind. When my mind is new, new every day. You know, perfect example of the Bible, one perfect example of the Bible. Who can tell me really this verse applied to one beautiful character in the Bible? Anybody can tell me who? You know him very well. He was taken as a captivity and he refused to be conformed to this world. But actually, he was transformed to live a good, holy life. Daniel. Daniel, Daniel was taken as a, in captivity during one of the, uh, during one uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And after Daniel was taken in captivity, basically he, was become, he became a prisoner of war. He has no choice. 
And the king at that time said, I want to choose three men to serve me. And they choose, actually, choose Daniel and three others. Uh, and then they, uh, they ask actually the chief that would to take Daniel and the three men to train them. And they have to eat good food because they're going to appear before the king. But Daniel, actually, Daniel 1 in chapter, Daniel 1, verse 8, actually, said something very beautiful. He says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. Which means life of holiness is a decision. Daniel made a decision. I'm not going to confirm to this world here. I'm not going to change to the pressure that I face every day in my life. But Daniel purposed in his heart. So the decision of Daniel to be strong came out of one thing. Get from his heart here. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defy himself. A perfect example for us. For number one, actually, do not confirm to this world, but a be transformed by what? By the renewal of your mind. Number two, actually, flee and pursue. And this is a very important concept, Bardo, in our spiritual struggle to live a life of fullness. Flee and pursue. And you will find this actually in 2 Timothy uh, chapter uh, 2, verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Actually, he's telling Timothy how to live a life of fullness. He said to him, he said to him, Flee also useful lust. Means run away. Run away from sin. But the key is not only running away. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. With, with thee who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But the concept here, do not just only fight sin. But fight sin and have a good spiritual life. As fighting sin alone, guess what? You're going to fail. But when you have a good spiritual life, a structured spiritual life with your father profession, you will struggle every day to come back to God. But the concept here is flee, but the most important thing is pursue a relationship with God. Establish a relationship with God. Always when you think about flee from sin, who comes to your mind? We call him the righteous man, a holy man, Joseph. Joseph is a perfect example for us to teach us how to flee from sin. And that's a very important concept. He tell him flee. You know this Joseph in Genesis 39, Genesis 39, after he became working for his master, his master's wife actually started to, uh, wanted to lay with him. And Joseph actually ran away from her. And actually she took his robe. Well, Baba Shuda, we will have a look at the Arab, we will have Baba Shuda, the Mordor, the Muli, we will be telling him on behalf of Joseph, you will be, who was a sober who is he in the Kalbi, lay Safi. The rope that he took, took, take it, because my heart is not in it. This rope, actually, this rope or this garment is belong to you. But you have the right to take it anyway. Kalbi milk rabbana. He said, you know what, Joseph, he said, Bob so, Shunud wrote actually, uh, yeah, man, our beloved father, he said, but the heart, my heart, is not belong to you. Neither actually later on the same song, it's not even belong to me, it's belong to God. But will I, by the way, ask my heart. If you ask my heart, my heart will tell you belong to God. So Joseph vowed before God in who he, nobody will enter his heart. It's flee and pursue. Nobody will enter her. This is a life of purity. Who was a sober for Jesus? One of our favorite songs growing up, we used to love this song here by our beloved father, Bob Shuda. Who was a sober for Jesus? No call, Bilay Safi. And Allah and Luke had a sober and well, I saw the home, look empty, look at the star gay. Fan Zah sober with shit to Brazil. Who by the way, who is at end. Fan it in the heart of today, we are called to live a life of holiness. You are coming to the church today. In the end of the liturgy, Abuna would say, the holy for the holy. The holy for the holy. And all of us, you see, is Taban for sure, one of the holy God. The only one is holy one, is God. One of the holy father, one of the holy son, one of the holy son, one of the holy spirit. But the holy God is holy, but yet we are called to be holy. So for that day, for that hour, the day of the Lord, said Paul, telling us today. When you go home today, I want you to read Second Peter chapter three. He gave us three concerns. Number one, don't worry about the day of the Lord. 
one day in the eyes of the Lord equal to one seven. Don't worry about the day the Lord will come like a thief. But the most important thing, think about heaven every day. But one thing he asks us, he asks us that day when he comes to be struggling and fighting temptation to live a life of holiness. Holiness does not mean that you are perfect, but it's a daily struggle every day from the image of God to becoming the likes of God. And we talked about two important points. Number one, in order for you to practice life of holiness, learn, do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of mind. And number two, actually, flee and pursue a relationship with God and glory be to God forever.